everybody, and welcome to VIS TV 2022. My name is Joan Viscardi, and I will be your host. For anyone new to this platform or existing viewers, thanks again for watching. Today, I'm super excited. I'm sitting here with some of the members of the Viscardi team, and we're going to talk about a topic really near and dear to my heart, which is wellness. So if you'd all take a minute to introduce yourselves, give a little bit of information on the role that you play at Viscardi and how long you've been with us. I'd like you to get started, so just jump in. Hi, I'm Deidre Pearson Toro. I'm the Director of Compliance. I've been at Viscardi a little over five years and I take care of the treatment requests, MGC for auths that come into Viscardi for our nurses to review and respond to them. Hi everyone, Hi. I'm John Viscardi, uh, Executive Vice President and at Viscardi, I'm in charge of business development and marketing. Hi, I'm Dana Perillo. I'm the Assistant Director of Nursing. I've been with Viscardi about three and a half years now, and I handle um, the case management side, help with the nursing, and, um, and review MGs. Hi, I'm Janine Franz. Um, I've been with Viscardi for a little over four years, and I am the Assistant Director of electronic records. Um, so any medical records that come in, I'm responsible for distributing them to the nurses and um, also an injury manager for different accounts. Hi, my name is Mishka Viscardi. I've been with the company for a little over three years um, and I'm an administrative assistant and work on processing treatment requests, tasks, as well as communicating with adjusters on a range of different administrative tasks. I'm Sarah Falco. I'm Senior VP of Operations. I've been with Biscardi since the beginning, probably about 13 years. Um, and I'm in charge of everything operational one could think of at Biscardi. Hi, I'm Brian Lavore. I'm the Director of IT. I've been with Biscardi now six years. And I'm responsible for keeping our system running for developing our claims management system and uh, all the other technology around the company. Thanks everybody. As you can, all can see, we have a very diverse group of people working at Biscardi who perform different roles on the team. We're going to talk about wellness and how this can be translated into the workplace, whether it be mental and emotional, physical, or the social health of employees. At Viscardi, part of our mission is bringing human to human touch to our work. We also innovate. So team, I'd like to talk about how do we work to do both and make it a healthy environment to work in? Because a healthy environment is good for everybody. So talk to me now, give me your ideas on what wellness means. How do we at Viscardi utilize the concept of wellness and maintaining a healthy environment? So at Viscardi, I know we really strive on um, emotional and physical well-being. A lot of things we encourage um, the staff and the employees to do is to stretch, get up, get fresh air, get vitamin D. They're also crucial. You know, sitting at a desk or in an office can be very trying on, on your brain, on your body. It's just good to get a fresh air, see the sunlight, get kind of recharged from the sun. I know personally... Um, I'm having a tough day and it's nice out. I love to sit in the sun. It's just so um, beneficial for me. Um, I think that's great that we kind of really motivate everyone to do that. I think it's wonderful. Also encouraging breaks and encouraging taking lunches because that's also important to keeping us overall just running and functioning at our best. I agree. I think also the fact that we have weekly meetings and we get to talk about anything that's on our minds. And the other person's literally there just to listen to you and try to help you through if you're going through something. So I think the mental aspect of having somebody there that knows what you're going through and for them to just be there for you is comforting. I think what you're both referring to is if, if I try to keep wellness in my mind is how it's broken down physically and emotionally and also socially, we're kind of touching on those. If anybody wants to dig in a little deeper. What well, yeah, what I was gonna say is really connected to what Deidre just said, which is, I think that as an organization, we are encouraged to talk about how we feel 
like if there's an issue or if we're feeling overwhelmed, if we're feeling super happy and we want to celebrate something, if we're feeling sad about something, particularly as it pertains to the work that we're doing, but also to some degree in the rest of our lives, we, it's, we know that it's okay to talk about how, we're, how we feel. And I think that that's important. It's not always easy. And I don't think that, you know, it's perfect the way we do it, but we, we are open to that. And I think that that's a really crucial kind of um, value. Thank you. I, I, I agree with that. Um, anybody else have thoughts on wellness in general before I dig much deeper into where I want to go today? Well, I think I also I just feel as though being, you know, home and that we've been remote for quite some time. It's really nice to know that, you know, we have our chat where we all check in with each other daily saying good morning to each other and just like maybe throwing a funny joke or something just to like lighten the mood. Because typically in the office, we would be together doing that or, you know, some of it walk in and talk about their weekend, but we can't really do that remote. So it's mm -hmm. nice that we have that open chat daily that we throw in anything that's whether it's a Netflix show or something and just anyone's comments, it's, it just makes you feel like you're there and you're not alone. So it's nice. It, I think that's really true. We've all been involved in a world of COVID for over two years now and Viscardi transitioned pretty easily. I think Janine, you touched on something interesting that even two years now later, our remote work is impacting us. So how do we engage socially together and I really, you know, recognize the chats every day that we have. I do recognize the Netflix recommendations. You know, we're living pretty solo. A lot of people aren't even going out to the movies, sad to say. So we're relying on other sources to keep us mentally well, not just at the workplace, but home. And talk to me what you think about, there's a very common phrase, you know, work, home, work, and workplace harmony. What does that mean to you guys? You know, do, does that work in working a full day at home? How do you incorporate the stresses of your home life that occur while you're at work and vice versa? So let's, let's talk a little bit about that. Anybody have any thoughts or ideas? Well, I would say that I think we're all still figuring out how to find that balance um, especially we all have a different range of home life experiences with kids, pets, partners. Um, and so there is a range of different home responsibilities that come into the forefront of your thinking when you're at home and figuring out that balance is still something I think we're working through. But what's been great is um, being encouraged to take breaks and communicate with each other when we're taking breaks and be able to say, I'm just stepping away for a little while and we go tend to our needs. And that's been um, really accessible. And for me has, has made it so much easier to feel like I can take room to breathe when I feel really stressed out and overstimulated from, you know, just working, sitting in front of a screen. Um, and it's, it's interesting because we would be doing the same thing in the office, but you're with people and, you know, you have access to go to Starbucks and interact with other folks. And so just adjusting to the home life, um, it's been, it's been made a lot easier with the kind of communication we have and space for breaks. Thanks, Mishka. I agree. Anybody want to talk about what we do at Viscardi with mental time off? Sarah, maybe you could touch upon that a little bit. With um, the onset of COVID and remote work, we instituted at Viscardi a program called Mental Health Time Off, and it allows people to take um, a half day if they need to, last minute, almost like a sick day, if certain employers offer that, um, where you can just say, I can't do another phone call, another task, and I just need a little break. And um, it really allows people, I think, a little extra time that they have is sort of in their back pocket if they need it to just get away um, and help out with something at home or with the kids or just for themselves to take a break from things. Um, I do think as an organization, um, we 
have to set the tone from upper management for the rest of the company as to people taking breaks, having time for themselves, instituting policies like that. All you do is read about um, people working 24 seven, not being able to step away from work because of the constant ability to get in touch with any employee at any time with phones and computers at home. So I do think it's important that um, as a manager, you take time for yourself too and show your employees that it's okay for them to take time off. Um, I try my best not to send emails or make calls outside of work hours. Sometimes it's necessary, but for the most part, um, I'm a big fan of the scheduled send feature in Gmail, which allows you to set a date and time for when your email goes out. So I know even if I'm working late, the person I'm sending the email to won't get that email until maybe the next morning at 9 a.m. rather than at 11 o'clock at night so they don't feel stressed about um, it. <laughs> I, I can't help but laugh with that thought because it took me years. Sarah mentioned earlier, she's with the company roughly 13 years. It took me a large part of those initial years to not be sending my thoughts at sometimes 5 a.m., sometimes 1 a.m. And I love that feature now. I love that I can schedule emails and not set the stage of stress or panic that someone else has to be working the way I am. I also think it's really important what you said, Sarah, in regard to managers taking breaks. It took me a very long time to realize, you know, I raised children knowing innately that what I did they might mimic my behavior, whatever my behavior was. But it took me a much longer time to realize that managing a team and leading a team, you set the tone to what people might do. You may say it's important to get up and take a 10 minute break every few hours, but if I don't do it, there's no point in doing it. And I think now, especially working remotely, we have no way to test and check each other. So I, I'm hoping that the things that we did put in place years ago, people are, by our example, really following to make it a much less stressful environment. You talked about mental time off. How does everybody feel about that? Do you, do you find it stressful having to set the time of when you're taking that day, half day off for yourself? Do you feel comfortable in being able to say to someone, Today might be the day that I need that time for myself. I know it's short notice. Anybody have any thoughts on that? I personally love it. I'm so <laughs> grateful for it because I'm one of those people that just with just my own life and, and experiences, some days are really rough and I need a last minute, you know, at least to reach out to somebody that I trust, like Deidre, who's my supervisor, I feel comfortable talking to about whatever I'm going through and being like, I need some time. I need to, you know, rail it back a little bit um, so that I can perform better. And having that time, either planning it ahead of time or just knowing I have that available to me so that I don't have to feel as pressured on myself you know, if I'm going through a hard time that like, I'm not going to do as well. And just knowing I can, I can take a break. It's been great for me. Thanks for that candidness, Mishka, because I think it's really important for everybody to understand. We as a company do give sick days, which many companies don't. Um, but we're not always, we're not, we're not geared as a society to say, oh, I'm not feeling well, I'm taking off, unless we're basically bedridden. I think COVID has ad added a little change to that. You know, we now as a society talk about illness more. What does that mean? How do we impact each other? But I think mental time off is really important. And I hope at Viscardi, we can continue it for a while. Anybody else? Anybody have any thoughts on not just the social and the physical, but the mental well-being of the company. How do you, whether you're a leader or somebody like Mishka performing tasks continually, how can we make things better? How can we be examples to other companies? I've sat down in the past year with large corporate leaders to small business leaders 
to the boots on the ground. And so how do we act as examples and what can we do and share with them that could help them in their journey? I think Mishka touched upon it already, but when you're in a situation where you just need to talk to somebody or you just need to step away, we have those people in our company. Like I can just go straight to Sarah and just say, Sarah, you know, I just need 20 minutes or I need an hour. I will be back. Um, I just need to gather my thoughts again. Or if it's, you know, talking to you, Joan, or anybody actually on this whole video speed, I can stop myself, talk to them, gather my thoughts again, and then just say, okay, I can come back to the best of my ability. And I think that's key with, with Scardi. And that's how I feel. It's the communication that we have with each other so open that we're able to talk about anything freely without being judged. I also but, think too, I feel like we all support each other and we don't want to like leave anybody hanging either. So if there is a period where someone doesn't have to step away, you do that, you know, you give people the courtesy to know that, you know, if someone's leaving, it's going to fall on somebody else. You want to try to be fair and, and, and just kind and understanding that it, it's great that you want to take that time, but you also have to think of that person that's also going to be taking on that work when you do step away or so I think we all are pretty good about doing that and just you know helping each other so it, it does make it easier at the end of the day but at the same time I think we all we have a good support system we've done a really good job with um keeping the communication open and flowing like just kind of like if as we were back in the office just it's very easy we've done a really good job with like not losing touch with everybody I think that's really important to keep that like um, office environment, but still be able to keep that while being remote. I think we've done such a good job with just like checking in on people. I, I really feel like the morning, good mornings, the conversations throughout the day, it just makes you still feel that you're still that, that like family unit employees in the same spot, but you're all remote. I think we've done a really good job with transitioning with that and keeping everybody in the loop and if you have everyone the space to to talk or bring up anything. I also Sorry. think the uh, company meetings are helpful just because that's the time that we just have like half an hour to an hour just talking to each other about everything and anything. You know, I mean, we also have our, you know, our updates with what's going on with the company. We have our desk size. We have uh, plenty of other things, but also the fact that we get to just say, oh, so how's everyone doing? What's going on? And just knowing that we we have that camaraderie is just fantastic. And the other thing I do want to add is that I know it's very important for like birthdays at our company. So it's always, everyone's always acknowledged and it's just really a nice thing to have everybody come together, just not even for a meeting, but just for someone's birthday or happy, something happy. And it doesn't have to be work related. We're just talking about just anything, you know, Joan will have her questions that are fun and quizzes and games. So I just think it lightens the mood and it makes everybody have something to look forward to. But where we were in the office where we'd have like breakfast together or go out to lunch together. And now like this is a good way to implement that. So <laughs> that's been nice. Yeah, we have, it's a real testament to our leadership. And like you were saying before, um, being a parent and then going into a role as an employer being your child I've seen the ways that you are as a parent and as you are as an employer and you really noticed who everyone is at their core and I think found ways to bring us together even before the pandemic with lunches and brunches and um, the book club which is a, an amazing way for everybody to connect and we've somehow also discovered that we have a pretty competitive spirit <laughs> at this party. So we love to play games. And even outside of work, we'll, we'll do um, like our spring step challenge where we, you know, motivate each other to get outside and also are competing with and against each other. And we've got prizes and it just like keeps us in communication outside of work. It, it just gives us something else to talk about and different ways to access communicating with each other and learning more about who we are. So that's built a lot of trust, I think, between us and 
literally just helps us to get to know each other. And even in the past couple of months, we've had new um, people come into our team who I think just are able to kind of fall in more seamlessly because we have this community and meetings where we just get to see each other's faces and chat and play and it's it's awesome that's true that's true no we nobody could not come into work today we did not win that big lottery as a team <laughs> <laughs> and i i do want to thank dana for coming up with the concept of the book club which has been great you know it allows us to read books that i might never pick up but it also to your point mishka allows me as a leader to see what it is that people are interested in you know because what interests us individually cumulatively, you know, is really great. I also am looking forward to Brian, hopefully some March Madness Madness. <laughs> oh yeah. Any yes. thoughts any I'm thoughts good. on that for the team? Yeah, I think we should do it again. <laughs> we only skipped one year. We've had it um I think three out of the last four years. So I won it's last so year. Fun. And uh, it gives people some excitement, um, like you said about the book club, giving you a reason to engage with books that you wouldn't otherwise uh, choose. Something like the, the March Madness pool gives people a reason to watch some exciting basketball games that they wouldn't otherwise have a, an interest in. And then you get to uh, smack talk with your coworkers, which is always pretty <laughs> You know, none of this could happen if we didn't have a really healthy and robust IT director. So Brian, I have to thank you for that. You know, our ability to work remotely. And when I think of wellness, much of it always has to do with my mental state of my relationship with technology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm definitely much calmer. I know today there could be a minute when a system goes down and you know, there's no well-being in the office at that time till everything's back up and running. So I just want to say that you all touched upon really key words. So I want to conclude with those thoughts. What I'm hearing is that wellness very much requires listening. It requires collaboration. It requires trust. But I think what we do also as a team is respect one another, first and foremost. And I think we can have a healthy workplace if we keep those things in mind. You know, constantly listen, to collaborate, to respect, but very much we have to trust that the person on that other side is hearing us. They're listening, they're really listening. So I'd like to thank you all for being here today. And I think it's been fun. I also have to thank the team members who are not here today because they're the ones keeping the work going and the stress level down so that the rest of us can be sitting here <laughs> chatting. <laughs> if anybody wants to say anything else, please, it's open for your thoughts. Well, I think uh, for one, I could just, and maybe this is a bit of an advertisement, but lay out that of the number of companies that I've worked for, uh, Biscardi, without a doubt, is the most um, concerned with well-being and mental health and has taken the most steps to um, ensure this type of environment, uh, I think it's pretty commonplace that companies just do not mention it or do not consider it and think of their people more as roles than as humans. And I think the, the general point we're trying to get across here is that Viscardi does a really good job in considering its staff as humans first and roles second. Um, and then by doing that, of course, you get the added benefit that the roles are performed better when the human is considered. Very true, Brian. Very true. And I think that goes back to the home and work harmony. You, you, you have, in order to have a healthy home or work environment, we all have to be considerate of each other and understand what that means. And it's different for everybody. What I've learned as a leader is you're all individuals. You come in with different ideas, different lives, lifestyles, goals, dreams. And as a leader, I think it's really important for people to hear that. So I thank you all very much.
we're all dressed a little nicer than usual. Like I would like. Yeah, you should flash a sign. Like managing a program of mental time off requires some mental time off after you manage it. <laughs> John has encouraged me to do yoga, so I've been doing two seven minutes, seven minute, mind you. Wow. Yoga things a day. My <laughs> butt and hip can't move. They're they're. <laughs> Dear God, I have. I mean, it's never... working. I mean, nobody wants to be Slytherin, though. It's like I'm definitely a right. Slyther... <laughs> Slytherin. 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 That you don't know the name. It just makes it better. I just like the name. Did we finish the episode? We did. Okay. I'll make sure. I hope so. I know Dr. Jones said, "Okay, we're stopping here." <laughs> <laughs>